Welcome to ATZ CAD. My name is David Atkins. A little while ago, I had a Mac student in my AutoCAD class, which was fantastic because it gave me the opportunity to show all of you the interface options that AutoCAD for Mac, for some reason, doesn't include. During the class, she kindly allowed me to record when we updated the interface to add the missing commands. Commands that are prominently available in the Windows version of AutoCAD, but aren't immediately available in the Mac version. So let's see what they are and how to add them yourself. If you've ever been using AutoCAD for Mac and wondered to yourself, how the heck am I supposed to measure stuff? You're not alone. Windows users of Civil 3D also wonder about this because Autodesk has oddly decided you don't need to do that or should be typing it. The commands do exist, but they can only be accessed in the menu bar or by typing the commands. Well, screw that, let's add it to the command bar. We're going to add a new panel to the command bar that's on the left side of the Mac interface. The process is actually pretty simple. We start by going to the bottom of the command bar and clicking the plus sign at the bottom. This will create a new panel we can use to add any command that we wish. At the bottom of the window, we can search for commands we want to add. In this case, all the commands start with the word measure, so we can simply type that in. This shows all the measure commands. You simply drag the command you want into the panel at the bottom. We are choosing to drag them more or less in the same order as they were shown in the Windows version. So, measure quick, measure distance, measure area, and all the rest. Now we get to decide how the panel displays the buttons. At the top of the panel we get six different layout schemes. We can cycle through the different options by clicking on the arrow on the right. In this case we elected to show three large buttons for the most commonly used commands and leave the rest as small buttons. Adding viewports is key to creating layouts which makes me wonder why they didn't make them readily accessible for AutoCAD on Mac. Oh well, let's fix that oversight. While these can definitely be placed as a new panel, like we did for the measure tools, they actually exist already as pre-configured main toolbar panels that aren't loaded by default. To add them, we need to right-click on a blank area in the toolbar, then choose Customize Toolbar. Do you have a Mac without a right-click button? Oh man, Mac mice are terrible for AutoCAD, and using one will make you hate both Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, which is bad because the Woz is great. Do yourself a favor and get yourself a mouse with a wheel. I promise it'll make your life so much easier. Being able to pan and zoom without using gestures is absolutely worth the $20 for a new mouse. Or $400 if the mouse is made by Apple. I, of course, recommend buying the $400 mouse because I own Apple stock. Anywho, there are two different toolbars that you can use for viewports. The Viewports toolbar and the New View toolbar. You're going to want both. The Viewports toolbar lets you create viewports in the classic way that AutoCAD has had for decades, with weird shapes and everything. And the New View toolbar will let you use the new hotness, Insert View. If your main toolbar is getting a bit crowded, you can remove the Pan and Zoom toolbar because you've fallen by advice and got a mouse with a wheel so you don't need it anymore. If you don't know, annotative objects are text and blocks and stuff that scale themselves based on the scale of the viewport. It's a critical skill and most likely the number one reason your fellow CAD users don't like you, either because you don't use them or you use them badly. It's either that or the fact you stop showering. Subscribe to my OnlyFans for that tutorial. I should probably make a video about annotative text, dimensions, and blocks, but it is a complicated subject that takes about three hours in my AutoCAD for Beginners class, link in the description, and I'm still trying to figure out how to turn that into a video that's short enough to be entertaining. It'll probably need to be like eight 15-minute videos, which is way too many. Leave a comment if you'd like for me to work harder on that. An important task when working with annotative objects is being able to add new visibility scales to existing objects. These commands are once again missing from the default AutoCAD for Mac interface, so let's fix that by adding them to the command bar. Click on the plus icon on the bottom once more and give the panel a name. There are a few commands we need to add, so we need to do a couple of searches. The first is add current scale, the second is delete current scale, and the third is add delete scales. Again, we get to decide how the panel displays the buttons. At the top of the panel, we get six different layout schemes. 
In this case, we elected to show three large buttons since we have three commands. And that's it. Another item missing in the default setup isn't a command. Another item missing in the default setup isn't a command. It's the ability to make a layer non-printable. This is an easy fix. It can be solved by simply right-clicking on the list of headers at the top of the Layers panel and checking the option. Now it'll show up in the Layers panel as a column and we can easily toggle it on and off. Finally, you should probably understand how the Properties panel on the right-hand side works. In an effort to make the Properties list seem smaller and more manageable, there's a slider bar at the top of the Properties panel that lets you see all the properties, or only see a curated list of them. Which is great, unless you haven't curated a list of them yet. Then you probably want all turned on most of the time. Otherwise, there will be a huge list of options you cannot see, and they will be a lot more confusing about why you can't change textiles and a bunch of things like that. You'll have to check that frequently because it does tend to reset to my quite often. You now have all the options that Windows users have available by default. Hopefully this will make following along with AutoCAD tutorials created for Windows users a lot easier. Did you find this helpful? Click the like button. Likes are how I decide if my next video will cover AutoCAD or Revit or something else. Did I miss a setting that you can't find? Leave a comment. My sincere thanks to all of my subscribers. It's been a crazy month with a lot of new subscribers, and it's definitely given me an unearned dopamine boost. If you haven't subscribed yet, you should know that all the cool kids have, and it's the reason why you weren't invited to Sam's pool party. Don't worry, it was a pool party in October, so it wasn't very fun. I think Jim got pneumonia. Also, there's apparently a bell icon that does something. Click on that, and we can find out together what it does. Finally, if you're interested in our AutoCAD, Revit, Inventor, Fusion 360, MicroStation, Civil 3D, SketchUp, or 3DS Max classes, check us out at atkinstechconsulting.com. As always, I'm David, and happy caddy.